All right, Russ. So this morning, uh, in light of all the craziness going on in the markets, uh, one of our clients reached out to me, just sent me this text. He said, man, you guys must be selling cra- like a crazy amount of policies right now. I told my dad, my portfolio is down 30%, but my life insurance keeps growing. What do you think about that? I, I'm going to push back on that right now. And uh-huh. here, here's why. I think that so many people use the stock market as a scapegoat as to why they're not financially free. They say, oh, well, the stock market's down 30% right now, and that's why I'm not getting hit. Hey, look, I'm glad that he says, hey, my infinite banking system that I'm doing with you guys is is going up in value. That's amazing. Right, that's a good thing. As long as he has used that and is using that to build passive income, I'm all over it. But what I would say is too often times, I mean, every insurance agent right now is telling their people they're talking to, hey, you ought to buy another life insurance policy because the stock market's going down. And I'm going to say that is not getting them any closer to financial freedom. Okay. So what do you recommend, Russ? Educating yourself, bro, on how to actually build passive income. Like financial freedom is passive income greater than monthly expenses. It's not, I have $5 million in my life insurance policies, cash values. It's not that I have $5 million in my 401k. It's not that I have $5 million in any account. None of those accounts matter. How much cash flow are those accounts producing on a monthly basis? And is it greater than your monthly expenses? And will it sustain for the rest of your life and longer? So, so I'm 100% agree with you. And the, the deal is, is that most people don't even know what you just said. The formula to financial freedom is actually the goal. And then secondly, where they stand in light of that. Right. Right. So, so I, here's what I want to do. Tribe, if you haven't taken our quiz, our financial freedom analyzer quiz, go to wealth.wallstreet.com forward slash quiz and take it. It takes 45 seconds. And you're going to know your score, like exactly where you are in light of financial freedom. Do it today. Do it now, right right now before you forget. Wealth.wallstreet.com forward slash quiz. And share it with somebody. Yeah, When I, they I start think- talking about how bad the markets are or how bad the 401k is or how bad you know the interest rates are on mortgages or whatever it may be, send them this and give them the step in the right direction. It, it's... It- Would we love to not have to complain about what's going on in the markets and be able to feel confident what we're doing? And when you hear someone else complain and say, man, that, that, that stinks. I feel your pain on that. Um, Have you ever considered a, a, an alternative route? Would you be open to me sharing to sharing with you what I'm doing and, and, and sharing with you, wealthwallstreet.com forward slash quiz so that you can find out where you are and so that then you could follow that up by getting on a 15 minute call. And if, by the way, if you're one of those people, you're like, I don't want no stinking quiz. I want to go straight to the person. I want to talk to somebody. I don't like that stuff, which is kind of what I do. I like to just jump on a call. I like to talk to people like, you know me, Joey, if I got a question, I don't want a message. I don't want to text. I want to get on a phone call. Go to wealthwallstreet.com forward slash free call. And you can find out like, where are you right now? And what is the thing that you should be working on right now to help you get closer to what your goal is? Because that is what's important. Becoming financially free is the the first step to then getting what you want, which most likely is time. It's time with people that you want to spend it with. It's time doing the things that you want to do with it. It's time to be able to go wherever you want. And that's what's missing out there. It's not the market's fault. It's not the administration's fault. It's not this fault. It's not that fault. It's your fault. I'm going to say right now, it's your fault Mm. because all of this is available to you. And you say, well, no, it's not. I can show you person after person in our community who's become financially free, who's become successful, and they've got worse scenarios than you have. They had lower incomes than you had. They have lower credit scores than you have. How is it they've been able to do it? They said, this is so important to me that I'm not willing not to make it happen. And if that's who you are, take action. All right. This is our September 2022 Passive Income Report. I hope it inspires you to take action and that you can grow along with us as we do this every single month. Let's jump into this episode right now. (laughs) 
Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now, here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Stallion, welcome to the Passive Income Report, September 2022. Yeah, I can't believe the year is like waning down. Like, I cannot believe it's already September. You know, I'm looking at this number and I'm looking at the the beautiful chart that you've put together for us, man. Amazing <laughs> Excel skills, by the way. He, uh, this guy is, is able, he, he's ambidextrous. And what I mean by that is that he can use both a PC and now he can use a Mac in order to come up with his charts. It's, man. It's, I, I'm, I'm in awe and I'm sitting here looking at the chart and any chart that you have, you want it going from left to right up toward the Northeast, right? Like you want to see it growing. Absolutely. That's a, that's a beautiful sign of progress. And that's what I see right now in this report. Well, let, let's, for those who are not watching it live, let's break it down a little bit. I think it's, um, we're going to talk more today about lessons learned, what's working right now, what sort of things you can be implementing personally on your journey to financial freedom. But I think just to give you a, like, let the cat out of the bag, we netted for the month of September $65,255 in nine cents. So that's, hey. that's a major increase from last month. Last month was only 35,782. So what would you account the difference for? Just just give us a basic difference this month. Man, I don't know. Like I I don't I don't know if there's one thing that we can just put our finger on. If it's all right, I would like to maybe individually go through some of these, talk a little bit about why why we like certain things that we're involved in, what what we maybe would like to adjust and um, improve upon going forward. That's what I'd love to do, man. I was just okay. actually listening to the podcast we did with Mark Podolsky and Sharon Shravatsa, where we were recapping the passive income report. And it, it just made me think about like, man, there's, there's so many nuggets and everything that we have, but sometimes you and I are just so close to it. We forget what is being learned and what is happening. Like with the land flipping business, Joey, like I see what's happening in the world today where real estate is hitting the skits, right? Interest rates are rising. We're getting a new uh, nervousness in buying new homes that creates a slowdown on the seller side. Yeah. Now the sellers are getting nervous. Should I, should I get rid of it? Should I drop my price? But what if I have to move? What is like everybody right now has a little bit of panic in that world where just six months ago, maybe even just three months ago, even though prices were stupid high, everybody knew what they were getting into, right? Everybody okay. had confidence of, okay, I'm going to buy a new house. I'm going to pay 50% more than I should for it, but that's just the world I live in and I'm going to do it. I'm going to sell a house. I'm going to get 50% more than I should for it. And then I'm going to turn around and buy a house for more than I should have, right? Like that's just the world that they were in. Right now, there is no confidence in that. Like right now, because it's, it's new, everybody's experienced this level of discomfort where in the land flipping business, what I have come to understand with this is that people are now looking at land and saying, hey, this is something that is stable, right? It doesn't have the ups and downs of everything else. Now, if I'm going to sell it, yes, I want to maybe get a little more money for it than I was before. So we're learning that the price of land is going up. Right. That's so right. as as real estate, as the homes are going down in value, the dirt underneath them is going up in value. What why do you think that is? Dave? Well, I, I think it's because when people start feeling any sort of uncertainty in the markets, they go to tangible assets. Right. Gold, silver, land is being one of those things. It's something that they can feel more secure with. The other thing I think is, is that when we take uh, the Land Geek model, if, if you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about thelandgeek.com. Our friends Mark Podolsky and uh, Tate Litchfield, Scott Todd and their group, 
the, this is their process that they put in place. But when you follow their process, they're teaching you how to then owner finance the land at 0%. Well, can you imagine if you've just been hearing this doom and gloom in the marketplace, buying real like homes and things at seven, eight percent interest rates that we're getting closer to, and all of a sudden you see a piece of land that you really love, you think it would be awesome to own, and it's being owner financed to you with as little as a hundred to five hundred dollars down in some cases, and zero percent financing, like that encourages you to buy. And, and so I think that's a, a big win that we're seeing right now. I, I do want to, I'm going to call back to what you said a second ago. Why do you think the land is more tangible than an actual home? Well, I just think because it gives people options. Um, it, people start getting nervous about the, the economy and everything else. They want to own something that they can sink their hands into. But you Whereas, could own a home. Why would you say the land would be different than that? I, I want to, help you clarify that well i think from the standpoint of a home they they're just gonna they're gonna hunker down in what they have they're just not gonna move to some other uh, property that now has potentially lost value or having to finance it at a much higher interest rate okay, so okay that's i'm gonna what, go that's what i'm thinking well when you said like well people will move to something tangible then you said tangible like gold silver land Instead of like tangible, like I could just go acquire houses. Houses are tangible. What I'm what I'm saying is they keep their value, right? Mm -hmm. The land keeps its value versus a home can fluctuate. And we've seen that like 2008, 2009, massive decreases in property values. So when people are looking to just park capital in a place, they want to go to these kind of hard assets, these tangible assets. And I think land is one of those. That's what well, I should have clarified. Well, I don't, I mean, here's the thing. I don't understand why it is or why it's not. I just, I want to like break that out because you said it. And if I was listening to you, I'd be like, well, why is a home not tangible? Why is land more tangible than a house? I don't think land is more tangible than a house, by the way. So, I mean, I, I'm going to disagree with you on you that because I, I don't know what to do with land as much as I know what to do with a house, right? I know a house, I can either live in it or I can have someone else live in it. Land I mean, I own land, but I mean, it's not as much. I mean, unless I'm a forester, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know why it is why it is, right? I, it is odd. It isn't, it's a odd thing for us to be looking at to say, well, tangible, meaning that I could live in it. I know what to do with it. Those prices are going down in value today as compared to just dirt. I can't live in it. I could live on it. Mm -hmm. its price is going up. I don't know why that is, but it is what's happening. So it's just an observation at this point to say, when we see why our land business is going up, well, one, we know people are, are wanting to purchase it at a higher rate right now than maybe when, than what they were before. And we see our, we, right, we've increased, we, we've increased our net income over the previous month by almost 9%. And we, we've seen a lot more cash purchases as well. I think people are willing to start buying and, and getting rid of dollars and checking accounts. I think one observation there is that they they see that we've got inflation over 8%, 9%. That's what the CPI says. We know it's much, much higher than that. Right. And I think you're seeing people acquiring raw land as compared to holding on to cash. And maybe the reason, as I'm talking this out, because that's the way I, I process is verbally, is that a, a home requires upkeep. It requires utilities. It, it has expenses as that's compared right. to the dirt itself, other than a property tax once a year, it doesn't have an expense. So if I'm going to take cash that's sitting in a checking account that I know is going down in value every single day, I'm looking for something that will potentially appreciate and doesn't have to have a, a monthly service. I don't have to service the, the payment on anything, right? I'm not going to have a, a mortgage note associated with it. I'm not going to have a utility bill associated with it. I'm not going to have to cut the grass necessarily, all of those things. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm answering my own question as we go. I'm just trying to figure it out. I know everybody else is sitting here listening, like, why is land doing so well? Well, maybe that's the reason. But it sounds like to me you just agreed with me, and I appreciate that. 
Um, I'll just let you talk long enough and you'll find out that I was right the whole time. Well, it's not that um, you but, went right. You just used the wrong words. And I was just trying to clarify. <laughs> Thank you. I just read this comment. It was so drawing joy. I wanted to share it. I realized that my time is not really mine. It's my company's. Now I have to stop negotiating my time for money and I need to start working to become financially free. That's exactly how I felt when my daughter Adler asked me on the way to school, dad, can you pick me up from school today? And I had to say, no, baby, I have to go to work. That's where I drew the line. In order for you to be clear on the things you need to do and stop doing and to know who you need to become so that you can stop trading time for money, join us right now at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash passport. Now let's get back to this episode. That's not the only thing that's been working um, this month. Let's talk about uh, what's happening in our short-term rental business. What do you want to share? Background, insights. We just got done meeting with our operator on this business. And um, I think we had some good takeaways. Well, here's what I would say. I'd I'd share, and I know your, your lessons will be different. We've been looking at, this is an asset like any other, and we're always open to selling everything. Everything we own is for sale. Make me an offer high enough, I will sell it. Every single thing we own is for sale. And we've had some people that have inquired about buying our short-term rental business. So we've had two different conversations in the last 30 days, maybe three in the last 30 days about potentially selling our our business called Wake Up in Birmingham. And I would say some of the things that I've learned through that process, Joey, is that most of the companies out there want to do one of two things. They want to either buy the real estate underneath it, which Mm -hmm. we don't have any real estate underneath ours. We have used the arbitrage model. We have been renting someone else's units and and putting those up for short-term rental. So they're not interested in that because they can't buy the real estate. Two, they're really... If they're, if they're not buying the real estate, they're interested in buying the management company. That's the, the group who's managing the whole process. And, and so, right, like for me, as I would look through this, it's like, okay, well, we can um, either start acquiring units that could be a part of that sale process if we want to go that route, or we can grow our management company and potentially sell that. What are lessons that you took away from last month? Well, no, I, I think you're right. I think that that's exactly what we we should be looking to do. And by the way, if you're if you're not familiar with this whole process of arbitrage that Russ just mentioned, the short term rental course that we have in our community is available to you. Um, you can certainly check it out here, wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash str course. Um, and you can learn exactly what we've done from our operator. We think it's one of the best courses out there that can help you go from starting your very first unit to scaling to 20 plus units, depending on where you want to take this. So just, just so you know what we're talking about, but I think the the big takeaway for me is, is that our end goal is to own more properties. And we, we started out this way. We did arbitrage because we were afraid that the market was just too hot in terms of the, the prices of real estate in our area. And we said, well, let's just wait until there's a softening in the market and go and buy those properties. So then we could then run those up in the times that will come after that and then sell them at the peak next time. Well, I think we're there right now and we're just going to be kind of sitting this out for the next, you know, 12 to 24 months to see what prices do and look for some creative finance deals in the meantime. But Uh, The other part of what we want to do is grow the management side. So co-hosting other properties in our area, like there is a lot of people that want to get into short-term rentals, but they don't have the management uh, feature. They don't have somebody that can manage their short-term rental for them. And so that's where I think we can bring a lot of value to the marketplace and go ahead and provide that service. And I, I think that's a focus for us over the next 12 months is to really grow that side. Those are, those are my two I guess, takeaways from the last 30 days. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sitting here, I was just trying to add it up real quickly as you were talking to see roughly how much have we made just this year alone. And it, it looks like we're in the hundred and twenty-five thousand, hundred and fifty thousand dollars is what we've made within <laughs> our 
our short-term rental business this year, right? Like, right. and you compare that to what we've put in it, right? We, we're, we've got about a 50% margin, right? 50% return year over year cash on cash return within our short-term rental business is a very profitable business. But to your point, like as the, the cost of real estate keeps coming down, it makes it way more attractive for us to move from arbitrage into the ownership model. Now, if you're just now starting out, that may not be available to you, right? Maybe you don't have the credit. Maybe you don't have the cash in order to get into that. Arbitrage maybe still be the way that you go. And our short-term rental course can teach you how to do both. I think that that's interesting. There's some definite lessons. Moving down the list here, lessons in the crypto world, Joey. What, lots what would of be changes. some of the yeah, what would yeah. be some of the the things that you would share? Lot, so lots of changes this month. As you we've been talking about over the last several months about Ethereum. Uh, is the cryptocurrency that we've been mining for the last five years, almost almost five years, four years. And um, just in the month of September, they went from a proof of work model to a proof of stake model. And all that means is that we can no longer mine Ethereum. It just switched in the middle of September. And so the group that we work with came to us and said, you know, we've been looking at some different other coins that we can mine with these computers that you own. And one of those options is Ethereum Classic, which is a, a totally different coin, but allows us to then continue to mine since Ethereum is no longer available. And so what you'll see here that happened, it was interesting in September, is the revenue amount that we were able to mine dropped significantly. Uh, for for instance, just combined between the two of us, we had a little over twenty two hundred dollars in uh, total revenue, but our expenses to mine those coins stayed the same. Right, we're still at uh, thirty five hundred, thirty three hundred, somewhere in that range to mine us. So we went backwards as it relates to the actual revenue we created versus the expense and. But the, the, the point is, is we had to find a different coin to mine. And I think we're still in that figure it out phase. That's what I get from our, the group that we work with is that they're going to keep monitoring this and make sure that this is the best coin for us to be working on. What well, would you add here, to that? Well, I mean, you know, there's some nitty gritty specifics within what we're doing. But I think what people are, are wanting to know, Stallion, is are we still bullish on cryptocurrency in general? Because one of the major reasons why our our number looks low is just because of the price of Ethereum is down 60 something percent from its high. Right. That's right. I mean, if you go back to January of this year, you know, we were. Our, our income was close to 10,000 where right. you just said it was 2,100. So like, I guess the math on that is 80% off. Like That's our right. income is 80% off. Well, the majority of that is due large in part to price being down right now. It doesn't mean we still don't own that a real estate, right? It's a, it's a different type of real estate. It's a digital piece of real estate, but we still own it. Are you still bullish on the price of Ethereum to come back in the future to, in essence, recapture the equity that it had on paper eight months ago, 10 months ago? Um, yes, I definitely do think that it's going to come back. And Why? it's just because of the utility of it. We've been saying for, for I mean, as long as we've been talking about crypto, is Ethereum just has a unique utility that will be much more, um, it'll, it'll be used in all sorts of different industries over the, the next, you know, 10 years. We're going to start seeing it in tons of different applications. And so to me, it's just like owning a product that become that goes viral, right? If you were at the front end of something like that, this, there's so much use for this tool that, it's impossible for it not to go. But that's my opinion. Okay. Well, I, and I don't, I don't disagree with you. I do think that there's a lot of opportunity for it to be valuable. And, and I, I, I guess my, I'm, I'm hoping that you're right. <laughs> like we have a lot invested in this 
And the, the beauty of this, though, is that this is not – people will say, well, Russ, I thought you said hope is a strategy. It's just not a great one. Why are you hoping on what it does? It's just a, it's a nice thing for it to go up. It's, it's, it reflects a f- fraction of our income, though. Right. Right. Like we did over sixty five thousand dollars in passive income this month and we actually show a loss last month in this specific asset. So it's like it it just doesn't make or break my day or I guess it doesn't break my day if it goes to some of the crazy um, valuations that some people think it is. It could make my day. Right. Like it could be like it could add seven figures to our, our bottom line. I mean, that's just the number of coins we own. As those coins start increasing in value, it has that potential. If it goes to zero, we're still going to have $65,000 a month of passive income just based upon this report. Yeah, and that, that's a key That's a key component. It's also, we've been telling you that we had a Bitcoin mining fund that was coming on board. Well, that finally came to fruition in September and it, it gave us a thir- uh, $1,352 income for the month of September. That's great. But this is a storage of value play less than it is a passive income um, cash flow play for us. Right. So, I mean, the fact that we are constantly mining Bitcoin and Ethereum Classic at this point is not because we're trying to get rich on the cash flow. It's that we really see this as a, a storage of value, no different than what we started this whole conversation out talking about land business. Why are people wanting to buy land? Is that they view land as a solid place to park capital in an uncertain time. You and I have adopted the fact that Bitcoin and Ethereum in particular are good places to store value. It's a good bet on the future that if we need a, an alternative currency that this is a good currency to to bet on. That's that's what I would add. Well, here, here's the thing. I think whatever you're doing, you got to find opportunities in the market where you have experience, but also be willing to pivot. And everything that you see within our report is based upon either experience, uh, experience within maybe a resource that we have, or that we've pivoted over time to add some new layer to what we're doing, right? There is a method to our madness. There is a a process to our buy box. It's our unique buy box. This should not be your buy box. You are completely different than we are. And if you want to figure out what that looks like, what is your investor buy box? What is your investor DNA? Go to wealthwallstreet.com forward slash free call. That's the easiest way to get on and ask a question of one of our coaches is, how do I know what my investor DNA is? How do I know what my investor buy box is? How do I get to a point where I'm creating passive income that equals or exceeds my monthly expenses? You need to be a part of a mastermind. And the, the thing that I love that I'm going to keep repeating that was said at our mastermind is that when you get in a group of people that are so successful, their normal behavior is your goal behavior. They're, what they're what they are already accomplishing is what you hope to accomplish, right? So then it's like, oh, well, if that's their normal, what is their goal? Now it gives me vision. It gives me perspective. It, it, it like challenges me to shoot to a higher level. No doubt. No so, doubt. So, so Joe, I know we're running out of time here. We've got to, we got to jump. As you look at our, our passive income report, there's things that I would say – that, that give us context to what we're doing, like our business, right? Our business used to be, Joey, it's all about infinite banking. That was what we were good at and we were known for. People came to us and said, man, you guys are the infinite banking gurus. I want to help. Uh, I need you guys to help me set that up. Well, do we still do that? 100%. But also we know that it's just the tool, right? It's That's just right. one tool in the tool belt to help you get to the ultimate objective, which is spending more time doing the things you want with who you want, wherever you want. And as you look at our passive income report, you get down to the bottom, you start seeing things like community info. Well, that's just a part of another business that we realize, like, hey, this is the thing that was been missing. And when I start seeing bigger numbers on there, Joey, it just tells me it's being validated by the market that the market is saying, I need help in these areas. That's right. People are seeking courses they're seeking groups like our inner circle 
where we've talked about this being a mastermind of people who are seeking the same things and being supported through our, our right next thing format to help them know exactly what to focus on next to make results. Because ultimately a membership without results is not going to last. Right. That's what we want to continue to add value. And, and by the way, that's where we're about to jump right now. We got to go into our inner circle. So um, yeah, this is, this has been a great month for us. Um, September, 2022, lots of lessons learned, lots of um, small changes and things like that, that we'll continue to refer to in months to come. But uh, I, we hope that this is a highlight for you. It's hope that it's something that encourages and exp- inspires you to find exactly what your path is to financial freedom. And uh, we want to be there to help you along the way. As always, thank you for listening to our podcast. If you've found value, please like, share, review, all those things so that others can find us and be on their path along with you. We'll catch you on the next episode. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.